Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve evaluate reverse Polish notation, leak code number 150. So we're given an array of strings, and that's called tokens, and this represents an arithmetic expression and a reverse Polish notation. So I encourage you to go to Wikipedia and check out that page, but I'm not going to do that. So we just really want to evaluate the expression, and that means return an integer that represents the value of the expression. So it's just a way of expressing some mathematical formula, and our job is to return an integer that is the result. Now there's lots of important fields here. So the valid operators are plus, minus, star, and divide. And the divide is actually interesting. We'll see that down here. And each operand must be an integer or another expression. Okay, so you can either say add two numbers together, or you could say add the result of one number and the result of another operation. So maybe you were actually adding the result of maybe a subtraction or a multiplication or something more complicated. Now the division between two integers always truncates towards zero. I'll show you how to deal with that. Basically, that means that if you had a result of say 3.5, well, that's going to round towards zero and make it three. If you had a negative number like negative 2.5, well, that's not going to round down in magnitude. It's not going to get lower to minus three. It's going to get closer to zero. So negative 2.5 would actually go to negative two. And don't worry, there's not going to be any division by zero. We don't have to worry about that case. The input represents a valid arithmetic expression in reverse Polish notation. Okay, so we're not validating to make sure that it's actually a valid RPN notation. It is actually valid guaranteed, and that's going to help a lot. And the answer and all the intermediate calculations can be represented in a 32-bit integer. So really just nothing to worry about there. So let's see what we have here. Two, one, plus three, and times is actually going to be two plus one times three, which is the result of nine. So why is that the case? Well, RPN basically just means that your operator here is actually going to be after this stuff. So instead of reading it normally like two plus one is three, we mean we have two, and then we have one, and we have an addition. So this addition is going to happen to the things before it. So when we add, we say, okay, what are we adding? Well, we're adding two and one, and so we have two plus one here. But then we have three, okay, that's another number, and we need to multiply the result of this stuff by three. So we have two plus one, that's this stuff, times three, so it's three times three, which equals nine. Okay, let's do another example. So we have four, 13, five, and then we divide and plus. So if we have three numbers in a row here, it gets to be a little bit confusing. And that's where we're going to use a stack very shortly. But we have four, and then we have 13 and five. When we divide, that means the previous two things is involved in that operation. So when we divide, we look for the previous two things. The previous two things are 13 and five. So we divide to get 13 over five. That's gonna be a result of roughly two. And then we're left with a plus. And so we have this result, and we also have this result, which is just four. So we're then going to add, here we add, the result of four and 13 over five. That's what we get here. So we have four plus 13 over five. 13 over five is going to be roughly two. That rounds down to two. So we get four plus two, which is equal to six. And this example here, it's honestly just too long. We don't really need that big of an example. So we're just gonna ignore that one for now. Now it's worth noting in the constraints that tokens at i is either an operator, so it's either an operator that needs two previous values or results of values to work, or an integer in this range of negative 200 to 200. Okay, suppose we were given these values. Now for this problem, we're going to use a stack, and we'll see why that makes sense very shortly. Now a stack, I'm gonna draw this as, as it gets more and more to the right, that is gonna be the top of the stack, and the left side, that's gonna be the bottom of the stack. So we would just use like an append to put that element on the right, and when we pop one off, we just call pop. So that's how you'd implement a stack. Now the rule is very simple. When we see a number, we're going to put it on the stack. When we see an operation, we're going to take the top two values off the stack and we're going to apply that operation. And it's honestly that simple. It's just getting to the point of realizing why that works. And we'll talk about why it works. 
So we see the first number and we get four. So we put that on the stack. We go to the next number and it is a number. So we put on five. We go to the next thing. It is also a number. And so we get 10. There's three numbers on the stack and we haven't done anything yet. Now, when we get to this point, we see our first operation. When we see an operation, what do we do? Well, we pop the top two off the stack. We have five and 10 and the order here is very important. We want the 10 to be up here and the five to be to its left. Left. Why is that? Well, it doesn't matter for multiplication. 5 times 10 is 50, and 10 times 5 is 50. But if this were division, if this was division, you'd do 5 over 10, not 10 over 5. Those are very different results. Okay, but we're not working with division here, so we are working with multiplication. Here we are doing 5 times 10, which is equal to 50, so we take those two values off the stack, we actually do the operation, and so we get the result of 50, and then when we do that, we actually put it back on the stack. So here, we do our operation on those two, and then we put it right back on the stack. That's very important, because when we get to over here, well, we need to take two values off of the stack. We're going to make sure that this shows up on the right, we want the four to show up on the left. If this were division, we'd want the division of four and then all of this stuff. We'd want four over that, not the opposite. So we do four, in this case, it's plus 50. It doesn't matter, four plus 50 is 54, but we get the result of 54. And then we put that back on the stack. Notice here, at this point, we are actually at the end of the array, and we're only left with one value on the stack. This happens because it is a valid reverse Polish notation, and so when we are out of the array, it is always going to happen that we have one value left in the stack. That will always occur because it's a valid reverse Polish notation. So at the end of this, you really just take the value out of this, we get a value of 54, and this is the result. Okay, so let me just move this to the side here and let's go through why this actually worked. Well, this works because if we were to translate this without using the stack here, let's see what we get. Well, we have a four and then we have a five and then we have a 10 and we need to multiply. When we multiply, that happens to the previous two things. So we need a multiplication of five by 10. When we do an addition, we are saying, okay, well, the previous two things, this is the previous and this is the other one. So we're getting the multiplication of of five by 10, and we're adding that to four. And that is our result is four plus 50, which is 54. This stack is actually a way of simply writing it like this. That's how it works. This is going to suggest a LIFO effect where the last thing that you put in is the first thing that comes out. So here, whenever you are adding new stuff into the stack, well, when you see an operation, we want to apply that on the previous two things. And so that is what gives our LIFO effect and therefore a stack. Okay, let's write the code, and I think it's actually really clever. So obviously we're gonna use a stack that's implemented in Python as just a dynamic array. We'll do 4t in the tokens. So remember, each of these are just a character, aka a string. Now, if t is in the string of plus, minus, times divides, what does that mean? Well, it is an operation. So this if is all the operation stuff. This is probably the most clever part is you'd write B and A is equal to both stack.pop. Okay, so we're basically going to pop both of these off the stack. And when you think of an operation, we generally think of it as A and that operation, we'll just call it times, times B. And this is very important that we write it like this because of how we said the order works. We want B, aka the right side, to be the most recent thing we pop off. So how Python works here, so it's basically saying that the right side is going to to be the most recent and the left side is going to be the second most recent. That is what keeps our order and it's why our division is going to work. Now here we basically just control based off the operation. If t is equal to a plus sign, well that means we want to add, we do a stack.append because we want to put this right back on the stack, the a plus b. Notice that on the stack, we're actually placing numbers here. We're given t as like a token, that's a string, but on the stack, it's actually going to be strictly number values. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste in for minus and times because they're really the same. And otherwise we actually have 
that it is a division. And the division is interesting because here the division between two integers always truncates towards zero. Now there's a faster way to write this than I'm going to do it, but it just makes the most sense like this. We'll do division is equal to a over b. Note that I'm using the single slash, meaning that will produce a float value. But now if the division is less than zero, if it's less than zero, we actually want the value to go up because towards zero for a negative number actually means that value is increasing in magnitude. So if that division is less than zero, we want to stack dot append the seal. So that's the mathematical seal. And actually, I think technically you'd have to import this. You would do from math import seal and floor. Lead code actually does that for us. So that's why we don't need to do that, but that's where it's stored. So stack dot append seal, we'd seal the division. If the division was less than zero, basically increase the value of that division to get it closer to zero. And then otherwise, if that's not the case, well, it's either zero, and so you don't really care, or it is bigger than zero, we would stack dot append the floor of the division. And so that's going to decrease the magnitude of the number. If we had, say, 3.5, that's going to make it three. It gets closer to zero. Okay, and then that's the most complicated part. So if it was an operation, that's what you'd want to do. We put it back on the stack. Otherwise, we want to simply stack dot append the integer value of the token. We know that t is a number, so we convert it to a number form, and then we put that value on the stack. And then as we said, it's actually going to work out such that at the end here, there's exactly one value left on the stack. So we just return stack at zero. Since the RPN is valid, we can actually guarantee this is true. And so that's going to work. Okay, we run it and we see that it is accepted. I'm going to zoom out so that you can see all of the code on one screen. So now our runtime of this algorithm, the time complexity is going to run in big O of n time based off of the length of the tokens. Okay, so if there's n tokens, this is basically just going to go through the array. All of this stuff, pop is on average O of one time, append is on average O of one time. All this stuff in here is really constant. So the time complexity is going to be big O of n. And the space complexity of this algorithm them. Well, we can see we are storing on the stack. Potentially, you could have n values here because you could picture if you had just like a bunch of numbers in a row, you're not going to be popping. You're mostly just going to be appending. So the space complexity is going to be big O of n. There's our final solution. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you later.